So we're going to start with the action which took place in the club hurling championship, namely Bally Gunners' really impressive victory over Kilroy McDonough's. I mean, this was the Kilroy side that had just bridged a 37 year gap in Tipperary. They just ended the famine there. They would have been coming in with some serious, serious confidence. The likes of Jerome Cahill that's in their side, the, the old Niall O'Mara at centre back. And yet, Bally Gunner just really reminded us all just how good they are. I think you kind of hit it there when you said they ended a 37-year wait. That only ended last weekend. Ideally for them, regards the AIB Munster Club Championship, it would have ended the week before, so they could have had a celebration and got themselves right. I don't think a week was enough for them. They would have been tired anyway, even if they'd won 10 in a row and won the title last weekend. You know, And obviously that wouldn't mean as much to you as it would ending a famine like they did. If they, you know, they would have struggled very even if that was the case. So fatigue caught them. I think Bally Gunner are a better team. You'd fancy Bally Gunner anyway. Bally Gunner had a bit of a gap, but they knew how to handle that in previous years. And a lot of their players actually played com- very competitive football. They got to the semi final in the senior club championship. A lot of the Bally Gunner lads would play football with uh, goals here. Uh, so they would have had that kind of sharpness. They would have had that strength and conditioning coming in because that's 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 one thing that any hurler will tell you. They'll play football because they actually get great um, fitness out of it. So they were more than ready despite the gap. And Kilroy and McDonald's, and you couldn't blame them. And I don't think there was any way around it. They just weren't ready. They just, like, I mean, they 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 weren't able to match Bally Gunner's intensity. And you, you couldn't blame them for that. It, they're one of the clubs I was talking about that had a great year, even though they made no impact in the uh, provincial championship. And I wouldn't blame them for that. Circumstances went against them. If they got Bally Gunner at a better time, maybe they would have done better. Maybe they might have even beaten them. Uh, but they, there was no surprise for me to see Bally Gunner do what they did. And look, it's still been a great year for Killer Ryan McDonald's. No one can take the county title away from them. Um, would they like to have won the weekend? Yeah, of course they would. But they were coming up against probably the one team you would like to avoid if you were in that situation, coming in off uh, an emotionally draining uh, final last week and a physically draining final last week. It was the perfect storm for Killer Ryan McDonough. McDonough's in a negative sense for uh, preparation for a high intensity game. And look, he just the, the circumstances told, you know, it, it, it was no great surprise to see them beaten like they were. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I agree completely with the point of Bally Gunner's season doesn't stop at winning the Waterford title. They are all about reclaiming that All Ireland Club title. And the fact that they did have a little bit more to rest then Kurawan, I think, definitely played into it. It was played in Walsh Park as well. I mean, that benefits the likes of Desi Hutchinson, that benefits Park Mahoney, you know, who play there at Waterford all the time. I know the Tipperary do have a lot of games there, but I do think that they had, you know, the lion's share of advantages. But still, to win by 419 to 14 points is hugely impressive. I mean, this is off the back of Nipirshig, you know, swatting aside Kilmallock. That's actually the team that they're playing against next. And just give a shout out to the people that stood out in this game. Kevin Mahoney obviously hit 2-2. Harry Ruddle hit a goal as well. And 18-year-old Patrick Fitzgerald with a goal and four points. I mean, for a youngster, what a way to make it mark. And Seamus, that's the thing about Bally Gunner. It's not like they've had this dominance the nine in a row in Waterford and the two Munster titles and one All-Ireland title. It's not like that's all been the same players. It's actually There's actually been an evolution of the squad there. And you mentioned Harry Ruddle, and we all remember what Harry did in the uh, club final last year, scoring that goal. Harry wasn't even in the senior team in Waterford. Harry played in the intermediate final against the Bally Saggart. I, I went down to um, Farrer Field. I actually live fairly close to Farrer Field now, uh, but, but just through one thing or another and, and covering the Dublin Championship, I actually don't get to watch a whole pile of Waterford Club Championship. Not live, anyway. and Not at grounds. And I, I looked at the team sheets and I said, what's Harry Ruddle doing in here? And like, it's not like he had any mass injury issues or anything. It's just that competitive in the Valley Gunner squad. So they've done this and they've had the success they've had with different managers and a lot of different players. There's some constant, but there's a lot of change as well. That's what makes us all the more impressive. And the Pearson would be a really stiff challenge for the next up. Now, I'm kind of flying blind here because I haven't seen a whole pile of the Pearson. I'll get to watch them before that, that game. I you know, would have their, some of their games recorded and available to me to watch back but um, again you know it yourself when you're, co- when you're actually covering games in a championship that championship has to be your primary focus and then obviously I have my League of Ireland stuff as well so it, 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 it's actually quite difficult to squeeze in time to watch games you know you're not covering and I haven't got to cover the Pierce yet obviously I will do it in a couple of weeks but um, 
yeah, like that'll be it'll be a stiffer challenge. But again, look, you have to what, what you have to look at that Bally Gunner game last weekend with an asterisk, and the asterisk is that Killer Ryan McDonald were just they were tired going into it. Yeah, and I do think that Nipirshi going into that game, Nipirshi are going to be more focused on we're not stopping at the Limerick. They have the players one hundred percent to go for an All Ireland. They've got Mike Casey, and if Jerome Boyle and I think if he slots back in. On top of the fact that they have the likes of Peter Casey and Kevin Downs in the forwards, if Jerome Boylan comes back in, that would be Jerome Boylan and Mike Casey, two elite man markers. And yeah. they could potentially take out your Desi Hutchinson and your Porrick Mahoney. And that could be a real game changer. Like, Bally Gunner and the Piercy Next is an yeah. absolutely outrageous game. Yeah, but look at the players Bally Gunner still have, even if you take out the yeah. two lads that you just mentioned. Um, and, like... Yeah, it, it, Peter Casey, but a, a great story with Peter as well. The work he's put in to, I suppose, getting to where he was and bouncing back after his injury and everything like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm expecting a really, really good tussle. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. And no, the other thing is as well, the winter conditions, it kind of throws in that battle element as well. Now, look, physicality is a big part of hurling regardless of time of year, but it's very different. It's a very different style of hurling. To what it would be in the heights of the summer and that's one thing that maybe Bally Gunner got caught on a few years in the Munster Club Championship uh, A they dominated teams in water but too much so they never had to kind of dig deep or like really dig deep but what was impressive about them when they won Munster a couple of years ago not last year now but a couple of years ago they did and last year it was the same and they found a way to win games and when they lost to Burris to Lee that time they, they didn't find a way to win but I think they really learned from that. Like I, I think they, they, they took lessons as a club, and as I said, it's been changed since. But they took lessons as a club, and in, in, and sometimes it's not even a okay, lads. This is what happened in this game, and this is what we'll do to avoid that this time. Sometimes you just have to go through the experience. You have to go through the hurt. You have to go through the actual experience of playing the game, how you play it, and and what you need to do. It's it's an intangible, is what I would suggest. Yeah, and the only uh, the other asterisk that I would add to that is Bally going going into this game physicality will be more important given the winter conditions. Napier should have probably the best midfield general in the entire country in Will O'Donoghue. I mean, he's the Roy Keane of that Limerick team. He is the absolute on-field captain, the general of that midfield. He dominates every midfield battle he's yeah. in. So for Bally Gunner, that's a huge, huge problem if they don't have someone that can match up to Will O'Donoghue because Waterford don't have anyone that can match up to Will O'Donoghue. That was why there was so much hope put on Cork Daly when he broke through yeah. last season. I was saying, can someone go toe-to-toe with this guy? Yeah. He's dominating every game he plays. That's a big well, factor, I think. Well, funny enough, if we go on the last fixture in the championship between Waterford and Limerick, and it's kind of a funny one. You nearly have to ignore what came after it. But I think what went wrong for Waterford went, went wrong well before the Cork and Clare game. They kind of, outside of Kilkenny, and, and go against them a good game as well, but Waterford did bring Limerick pretty close last year. Now, mm-hmm. maybe you can say, did they really, or was it a bit of a late rally? But it, it would suggest that Waterford are, are not that far away, and they just got their prep wrong for the Cork and uh, player games, and they got their prep wrong for just the championship module and structure. And it's easy to sit here and say they got it wrong. It's very hard to actually get it right, especially when it was the first normal championship in quite some time. And look, Liam Cannon did a fantastic job uh, with Waterford. Like, absolutely fantastic job. I was very sad to see him go, I have to say. Um, and I, I'd have liked him to stay. But look, you, you couldn't blame a guy for taking a job in his own county and managing his own county, especially when there's a lot of talent and he's managing a lot of those players and has managed a lot of those players. But look, Daly's in now. He's doing a good job. But my point is, is well, it's kind of a mute point because I'm talking more about Waterford than Bally Gunner, but... Maybe some of the Bally Gunner lads will look and take confidence from that day and say, well, OK, you know what, the championship went wrong. But when you actually look at the game against Limerick and Will O'Donoghue who was part of that, then maybe, just maybe, we can we can do something here. Yeah, well, that was, to me, that was the moment that I knew Limerick were just, the metal was just unquestioned. Because if, like, let's yeah. spin back the clock to that time. Waterford were being talked up by everyone as being Limerick's direct rivals for the All-Ireland. They had just beaten Tipperary. Yes, not the most pretty, but then they hit two goals in the last few minutes to bring Limerick back to, what, two points? And Limerick go down and hit the next three points without reply. That's when I was like, right, these guys are just, there's no task that they haven't overcome. And that's why 
I think people underestimate how good Clare were last year. Look, just things didn't fall into place. Yeah. Anyway, doing a complete switch going to the yeah. football. Actually. Sorry, I, 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 uh, I, I know Clare people will pick me up. I appreciate Clare brought Limerick close as well in that Munster yeah. final. Um, so look, Clare, Waterford, Galway, Kilkenny, they can all say they brought Limerick close. So maybe I'm taking.